Newsweek Magazine contributing editor Eleanor Clift has been on campus this week as a Woodrow Wilson visiting fellow. She has met informally with students and faculty, spoken with various classes, and she appeared on Sanford's student weekly radio program called Spotlight Sanford. Last night, she presented a lecture in Brock Hall titled Women in Politics, From Suffrage to Shattering the Glass Ceiling. Earlier, director of the Mann Center for Ethics and Leadership John Knapp talked with Cliff about women in politics and what young women at Sanford can do now to begin a career in leadership. It's been only 90 years since American women gained the right to vote. And much more recently, women in public office were probably considered an anomaly in most parts of our country. And yet today, the rise of women in politics uh, seems to be accelerating at many levels. And certainly at the national level, we've recently seen the last two Supreme Court appointees, the last mm -hmm. two Secretaries of State, the current Speaker of the House. How do you see this trend? And can it be long before we see a woman in the White House? Well, the figures you state are obviously true, and we are seeing an influx of women into the Republican Party running in primaries in this election season, which is a bit unusual. But I've been covering women in politics for some time, and I remember 1992, which was the year of the woman, when uh, more women were elected to the House and Senate than at any time in the past. So this is not a recent phenomenon, it's an evolving uh, phenomenon. And uh, I think we will see a female president sometime this century. The century is young. Uh, but uh, women still have what is known as a pipeline problem. If you ask where presidents come from, usually former governor or from the Senate. And today we have six female governors out of 50. And I think we have, uh, you know, 16 or 17 women out of 100 in the U.S. Senate. And you can almost run down through each of those and come up with reasons why they're not likely presidential material. So when Hillary Clinton failed in her bid in 2008, a lot of women were despondent because they didn't see where the next generation was coming from. I'm sure she's out there, but uh, she may still be in junior high school, so I think um, I, don't, I don't see it uh, in the imminent future, although there are some scenarios that have uh, Hillary Clinton possibly uh, waging uh, another race. And so I don't think she's done yet. <laughs> so uh, I don't want to pronounce her, her presidential career over just yet. Are gains by women in politics a reflection of changing public attitudes or of changing hopes and expectations of women themselves as potential leaders, or is it both? Well, I think uh, all the professions now are open to women, and women are now the majority in undergraduate programs and colleges, even leading to some concern that we're leaving, you know, boys behind. And I think politics is actually a lagging uh, indicator because uh, it's a field where uh, you have to put your family on display and release your income tax mm. returns and there's a lot of uncertainty and you might be rejected and people in general and women in particular don't like to fail in front of everybody. So there are a lot of obstacles to getting uh, more women into, into politics. Uh, and you hear from some women, they say, well, it's not an honorable profession. Well, if you want to wait till politics gets cleaned up, you'll wait forever. So you got to get in there and that's my message to mm young women who I would like to see more of them in the political arena. What advice do you have for college women today in any field, not just in politics, who aspire to hold leadership positions in their future careers? To get out there and do it. And in fact, I've seen on the campus there's a, a poster for a young woman who's uh, running for student government, which is quite professional, and she is transmitting her values by having an open book about former President Reagan and by Speaker uh, Gingrich. Uh, and uh, her, her poster is, is quite uh, professional looking. And in some of the classes that I've met, I've met people with uh, different views, with more progressive views. And they're interested in working in campaigns. And I think, like most things, you know, you have to get out there and experience what it's like. And you generally have to pay your dues. I mean, most people are not going to run for president on their first time out. Uh, and student government is a good place to start. 
grassroots, school boards, community activism, and getting engaged in your community. And this generation actually is very good at that. I mean, they're volunteering. They don't necessarily see how Washington connects to their lives, but they're more engaged in their local communities. And I think that's quite heartening. I'm Nathan Troost, Sanford University.